We're making a dress. We're making not just any dress. We're making a modern dress. You might be thinking, Kat, why are you making a modern dress? That's so off brand. <laughs> well, believe it or not, I do actually wear normal clothes as exhibited today. And a while ago, <laughs> if you don't know this about me, I am a TikTok sleuth. Um, I just, I'm on there all the time. <laughs> My brain is now addicted to the nine second dopamine and what can I say? But a few months ago, I saw on there that there was this beautiful dress someone got and I was like trying it on and I was just, I was really stunned by it. Um, it was in green, which is my new favorite color. I've moved slowly away from mustard yellow to a, a, a green vibe only. Um, and I really, really liked the dress and, and she looked amazing in it. That always helps sell a dress, doesn't it? So I thought, I want that dress. So I looked it up. I'd never heard of this brand before. The brand was called Reformation. Um, apparently, I think they're an American brand that do like quite trendy with some classical romantic line dresses, which I really liked. And yeah, I just, I was really, I don't know what it was about this dress that really grabbed me. I was really into it. But when I looked online, it was like 300 pounds, which is not an amount of money I'm willing to spend on a dress and willy nilly, you know? So as a maker, I thought, hmm. My first thought mm, was, hmm, but I still thought, oh, I want to give this dress a, a, a try. So I looked it up and they had a couple of shops in London. The shops had really poor reviews. They said they, they stuck to a very limited amount of sizes in their shops, which immediately put me off because you know all their photos. They do have a plus size range, um, but apparently they don't stock those in the stores. I don't know why, it's, it seemed insane to me. Anyway, I went to the shop and perhaps as expected, they did not have my size. Whatever. What I did notice while I was there was that I took out my little Sherlock seamstress lens and I ended up looking at all the seams, all the little bits, and I could see like all these loose threads, some wonky stitching. Um, it was all polyester. And I started thinking where the two, where the 300 pounds were, you know? I was like, is it in this seam? No. Is it in this? No. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe making a maker has made me really skeptical. Um, a fast fashion but 300 pounds is a lot of money so instead I went fabric shopping <laughs> I did not buy that dress um, I decided that I could try to make something similar inspired by those sort of design lines and then I also had a look online and these sort of design lines have been very popular I think I'm a, a couple of seasons behind I'm sorry but they have been very popular specifically in 2022 and I saw lots of other shops with similar dresses so I thought maybe I could give it a go a modern dress. I was intimidated. So I went fabric shopping and I decided that I needed two fabrics for this. I needed an overlayer because that's kind of what the dress had. It was, that's what gives it that sort of more soft drape. Um, and I found this really nice polyester chiffon that had like a crinkled texture, but it wasn't quite pleated that I really, really liked. I liked the texture of it and I thought it would give another dimension to this plain dress. So I bought five meters of polyester chiffon in this beautiful green for, I think it was four pounds a meter. So it was just under 20 quid, really good. And then I decided that I needed a bit more of a strength layer because the bodice was like, they call it a corset top. It's not a corset top. It's a fitted bodice or like a fifties, you know, that kind of vibe. I'm not a fifties person, but you know what I mean? That needed a more of a strength layer. But I noticed that what really gave that dress the fit was this shirt panel at the back. And I noticed as well when I was in the shop that it had quite a lot of gif. It's, it's like one of those, I thought it was jersey at the shop, like one of those stretchy jerseys for dresses. I couldn't find any jersey that I liked, but what I did find was a cotton sateen that had a little bit of stretch, but not too much. And it still would give enough sort of fit to the bodice section. So I bought three meters of that at eight pounds per meter. So I think the total cost of the dress, including a zipper that I bought and some thread was under 50 quid, which I thought was really good. I bought all my materials and then I bought two patterns. I bought a fitted bodice pattern. I think it's called like a corset top pattern on Etsy, which I really, I, I really like the look of and I think it's gonna work really, really well. Um, and I bought a midi skirt pattern. I, I don't know, I thought I could alter, I think I can alter it into a skirt. So I'll put the links to those patterns down below in case you're interested. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what it is about this mythical dress. 
but let's see how it goes. Let's just go make it. Let's go cut some fabric. Actually, let me talk about the mock-up real quick. I made a, I made a mock-up of the skirt and the top. Um, the top fit great. I was really impressed with it. It was really easy to follow the instructions and assemble. I didn't follow any instructions. I just assembled it. The fit was great. All I had to do was lower the cups a little bit to match the design line that I wanted. The skirt didn't quite give me the silhouette I wanted, so I'm altering the pattern to add some more, for it to be a bit more A-line. I also needed to keep in mind, as I saw the skirt, I don't know, I need to make it fit my body a bit better because obviously I don't have the silhouette as the model I'm wearing this dress. So we're gonna make it work. I think the motto for this project is make it work. So let's go. So all I've redone is I've cut out the pieces for the sort of bodice and the skirt out of the cotton sateen and the chiffon, which looks like this, and then I just uh, basted them together along the edges so that I can work with the pieces as one. And it just looks like this. It took a little while. I've only done the bodice because I think I'm going to focus on that for now. Um, and then all I did was I overlocked it. Now you may have not seen the overlocker on the channel before and that's because I don't use it very often. But it is useful and because this is a modern make I just thought that's going to be the quickest and easiest way to finish these seams and also work really well because these are lightweight um, fabrics. So yeah, that's what I've done. And now I'm just going through and basting all of the seams. And then I'm just going to start on the construction. So the pattern did come with some instructions. They're very simple. Um, I'm going to start with the cups and then insert the cups. Uh, no, I think I have to seam two bits together and then I can insert the cups. But the cups are the fiddliest bit. And if it's, if it's as small as you can make it, so like with only two pattern pieces, then it's way easier than if you did the whole of the bodice and then inserted the cups. So that's what I'm going to do and enjoy some re hopefully relaxing sewing footage. Okay, so a quick update. The next step I have to do is to sort out the back panel, which currently looks like this. Um, I fit the corset mock-up with just the plain, plain fitted back, but what you might notice if you look at a lot of these fast fashion, but dresses that look like they fit really nicely, is that they commonly have a shirred panel at the back, and shirring is when you have elastic in the bobbin thread of your machine and then it kind of helps give some give really which can make the fit work really nice so I thought I'd try it I added to the to the actual pattern which is this one I added 1.5 so I measured how much it would be if it was 1.5 and then I added to it to make it a bit longer um, this was after looking at some tutorials online because I've never done this before um, and then I've marked my panel with lines that are half an inch wide or half an inch apart and I've wound my machine with elastic thread on the bobbin by hand and I found a sweet spot after doing a couple of samples um, with I tried the zigzag stitch I tried a normal stitch um, with different tensions and different uh, stitch lengths and uh, I found that my machine cannot go underneath three for the tension but four is too loose because if you if you lower the tension beyond that this is what happens can you see like the it's too loose to the point where the up thread is, upper thread is like coming off so I'm gonna try it with the tension that I've managed to figure out which is uh, a tension at a 3 and my stitch length at 3.3 I'm afraid that might not just give me the the really dense shirring that I wanted because I just don't think this loose one looks very pretty but we'll make it work but all you need to do this is make sure that you the the corset uh, the top, the bodice, fits um, just with the normal pattern because technically that's what 
I don't know. Just make sure it fits first and then add a shirt and then you can take away stuff in the side seams if you need to. That's my plan. So let's get to sewing. I really don't like sewing with elastic. I find it very nerve wracking, but we have a few lines to run. I will see you soon. <laughs> So I've been sewing mostly late at night, so it's been a little while and a little progress since I last spoke to you. And we also lost power for like a few days, so it's just been a bit hectic. But I thought I'd talk you through really quickly what I've done, because the dress is nearly finished, kind of. Mm. So I worked on the shirt panel, which you can see here. Um, I know I told you about some stitch lines and tensions that I was going to use, but I found that those didn't gather it densely enough for what I wanted. So it wasn't even smaller than the original panel. So it means it would have stretched to be much bigger and it wouldn't like fit me properly. So what I found I could do was after sewing the rows of shirring, I could just pull on the elastic, securing it on one side and then pulling on it, sort of gathered it a little bit more. So that's what I did. And then I sewed across the edges like 400 times to make sure those elastic threads are locked in there. I'm still not 100% confident. I don't know how people do it. <laughs> and then I attach it to the, to the bodice. Um, it looks all right. The bodice in particular I'm happy with. Then the other thing I started working on, um, which took me a really long time, is the skirt, which you can't quite see here. But the skirt was a pattern I got off Etsy. I'll link it down below. It's like your basic fitted skirt that had like a, already had a leg slit. And most importantly, had a, a front panel, then had two like side seams that would meet up with the bodice seams. And that's why I picked it. I'm not sure where I've gone wrong. It just doesn't quite have the same drape that I wanted. So what I did was I actually altered the pattern after the mock-up to give it a little bit more flair at the bottom. And then when I cut out the chiffon overlayer, I added even more flair. But there was a limitation to how much I could add because I could only add it to the side seams or the slit at the front. I couldn't add any to like the back, only the side seams because of the way it was cut. Yeah, I kind of wish I'd used a different pattern, I think, just because I, I could add more volume. Okay, and then what I did was the skirt lining, which in this case is the cotton sateen, and the chiffon are actually individual layers. So I only basted them across the back darts so that I could sew the darts together. Um, and then they're only going to be together at the waist and the zipper. Everything else is gonna be loose and independent from each other. So then I have to finish the leg slit individually on each, each layer and then hem them. I still haven't done that. Um, and the other thing I've been doing a lot is fittings. So I've basted in a zipper that I just have for fittings. And it's really important, especially with a shirt panel, because I found I had to take in a lot in the side seams and this in the back, because the shirt panel had so much give. And right now I'm going to finish the back neckline with a facing like this. And that also means I'm trapping the little thinnest little straps in there at the back as well. And the other thing I did wrong, oh, you guys, this was so dumb, but let it like, be warned. So cotton sateen has like a shiny side, which is like the sateen finish, which is a bit smoother. And then it has more of a normal fabric side that is a little bit grippier. I should have put the sateen side. I treated that as the right side of the fabric. So I had it facing out, but I should have had it facing in because now the skirt inside has like the grippier side inwards which means that it sticks to my, it, when, when I'm wearing tights, which I was hoping to for the party, it's gonna stick to them and not drape. So I might have to add an extra lining to the skirt inside just to make sure it like has some slip. A mess, I just, I've really made a mess of this. It should be way easier than this. So yeah, I will bring you back some, another sewing update very soon. Okay, so I just wanted to show you because I think this will be my last fitting. I know. Um, I'm, first of all, I'm so sorry the filming for this has been so erratic, but I've only really been sewing in the evenings after work when it's really dark. And so I haven't been 
filming much because I don't think the footage will be very nice. But here we are. This is the dress. Um, I think last time I told you I wasn't really happy with this skirt and I was going to make some changes. And I've made those changes now so I thought I would show you. So the skirt looks like this. It's quite dark and this isn't the best lighting so I'm hoping I'll get some nicer photos for you soon. Um, but basically what happened with the skirt is that I think the pattern I chose was did not have enough volume. And so I wasn't really happy with the shape and I didn't think it was very flattering to my body. So this is the point where I strayed away from the style lines of the inspiration dress. And that's because I just didn't have enough fabric to recut the chiffon overlayer. So I had to make it work. And what I did was I cut out triangles and made little go days, which you can kind of see, but because the skirt is so dark and like now it's so full, it I don't think they're super noticeable, but it does mean that my <laughs> my seam lines don't really match anymore. And I can live with that. That's fine. Whatever. This skirt looks way nicer now. I'm really happy with the bodice and I'm really happy with the bodice fit and uh, there's a little bit of a facing issue which I still need to tuck down but I do think this shirt panel was absolutely essential in getting this sort of fit but still really nice, nicely comfortable and I need to hem both the cotton sateen underlayer and the uh, chiffon. As you can see here, like I keep having this issue with the skirt which is that the underlayer keeps catching on the tights. Uh, so frustrating, but I've, I've like looked through my stash and I don't have anything else that I could use. It needs to be something with slip. So if you're making a dress like this, don't think like me. Just get something slippy for the, the skirt and the needs so that it can still move properly. Um, but otherwise, I think that's a success. I just want to talk about the hem really quickly because I just I've just finished chopping away at it in a frenzy as it's hanging here on a hanger just on my wardrobe and as you may be able to tell it is so uneven <laughs> I don't know what's happened but like the back is even shorter like the back is shorter than the front um but I can't really shorten I can't balance it out because I don't want it to be any shorter so it's going to be longer at the sides as you can see and a little bit shorter at the front and the back it is what it is. I think it's because of the way it's draping with all this extra volume I added in uh, the triangles. And as you can see, there's like some puckers because wherever I used the selvage, the fabric wasn't like quite taut. But I've I've reached that point in the project where I no longer care. <laughs> it's a cute dress. It doesn't need to be a perfect dress. It's, it's, it is what it is. So now I'm going to do what it's called a baby hem on the chiffon, which is where you turn it under once and then you trim back and then you turn it and so again and do the last little bits I showed you and then hopefully the next big footage will be me wearing it, I don't know. Hi! Please excuse, excuse the lighting. I'm about to go out for the New Year's Eve party and I just wanted to show you the dress. You can't quite see. Okay, so here are some final thoughts. I think this was a really good experiment. Um, obviously, it doesn't look like the original dress because I made some really questionable decisions during the making, but things I've learned. Um, if I were to do the, make this dress again, or for you if you're thinking about it, here are a couple of things that I would do differently. I would not make the lining of the skirt uh, out of the same sort of sturdier interlining material as the top. I would instead just line it, and I would also line the top because it, I left it unlined but the facings really add a lot of bulk and the fact that I overlocked all the seams always also adds a lot of bulk so yeah and then I think that's about it I think the shirt pattern works really well 
I think I inadvertently made it a little bit too tight because I was trying to compensate for the shirt panel. But I think overall it's a really cute dress. What do you think? Well, I actually have to dash off. Happy New Year everyone. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video. Let me know if you like it. Let me know if you like some more of these videos or like pattern recommendations. I want to try to find a better skirt pattern for this type of skirt. And uh, I will see you in 2023.